My name is Vince Parker, and I am so glad to be back with you. We're in the middle of a series called Difference Makers. Everybody say it with me. Difference Makers. Come on, church. I can do better than that. Let's say it again. Difference Makers. That's what I'm talking about. And our key scripture for this has been in Colossians 3.10. It says, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. See, as we are new in Christ, for those of us who are Christ followers, the more we become like Jesus, the more we become difference makers. And in this series, this is what we're learning. We're learning, hey, with righteousness equals right relationships with others. We're learning that holiness equals set apart from sin for God's purposes. And tonight we're going to talk about how justice equals making wrong things right. Now, I want to tell you a story about a young lady named Esther. Now, Esther's story can actually be found in the book of Esther. And I'm just going to summarize it for you. But there's four key characters, okay? So the first one is King Xerxes. Now, King Xerxes ruled over 127 different provinces, provinces from India all the way to Ethiopia, right? And this dude was so big and liked to party so much. He threw parties that lasted over 180 days, which is a long time to party. But he threw big parties. Then there is Esther. Now, Esther, at the time when the story begins, she's just a young lady, and she's been through some things because, see, Esther's parents actually died when she was young, and she was actually raised by her uncle, Mordecai. Now, Mordecai happened to be part of the king's army. And then there's, well, Haman. We'll get into him a little bit more. Now, King Xerxes might like to throw these great parties, but he wasn't the nicest dude. So much so that he had a queen. And let's just say back then being a queen was like a job and he fired her. And he says, you know what? You're not doing what I asked you to do. So you're out and I need a new queen. Now, Mordecai heard about this, and so he told Esther, hey, I, I got an idea. I think you should try out to be queen. And so she listened to her uncle, and she went to try out. But it wasn't like how you just walk up like America's Got Talent. It was like there was over a year of preparation to get ready to just try out to decide if King Xerxes would pick you to be queen. So that's what she did. She prepared for a year. She had coaches. She had everyone in her life to help her get ready to be queen. And guess what? King Xerxes picked her to be queen. Now, I imagine her life changed great. I mean, anybody who can throw a party that lasts 180 days got a lot of money. He ruled over 127 different provinces. And I imagine she had all these people to help her out around the castle, all these people to serve her. But again, it wasn't like she got to hang with the king, but we'll move on. Well, now there's Haman. Now, Haman does not like Mordecai. Why not? Maybe they grew up together. Who knows? But one day, Haman went out, and he was hanging out, and all the other troops were saluting. They were bowing. They were showing respect. And for some reason, Esther's uncle, Mordecai, said, you know what? I'm just not going to show you any respect. I don't think you deserve it. And so that made Haman really mad. He was like, I'm not down with this. This ain't cool. So he didn't try to get him fired. You think he would just be like, you know what? I'm the highest ranking official in King Xerxes' army. I'm going to get you fired. He does something that's really messed up. He says, hey, I know that Mordecai is a Jew, and I'm going to have all the Jewish people killed. So what does he do? He goes to King Xerxes, and he says, hey, and he just makes up a bunch of stuff. He's like, hey, we need to take these people out. They're no good. Trust me, I've met a few of them, so we're just going to take them out. And King Xerxes is not really paying attention or listening. He just says, okay, go ahead and do it. And one year from now, one year from now, you can just take care of all these people. Now, that's messed up. Mordecai hears about it, and he's like, man, I can't believe this is happening. This is crazy. But you know what? Esther... My adopted daughter, my niece, she's the queen. I'm going to go talk to her. Let me go holler at her. So he gets a message to the queen, Esther. 
And she says, hey, your people are going to be killed if you don't do something about it. Now, Esther's like, but what can I do? Like, you know how King Xerxes is. Like, if you don't listen to him, he will get rid of you. Remember the last queen that was here? He got rid of her. That's why I'm queen now. And you just can't walk into and talk to King Xerxes like that. But he said, these are your people. You got to do something. So she did. So she made a way. She walked up. And essentially she said, hey, here's the deal. Haman wants to take out my people. And King Xerxes was like, what? What, what, What's going on here? You know what? We're not going to do that. That's messed up. Matter of fact, I will take care of Haman myself. And essentially, she saved all of her people. And then Mordecai got promoted. And the Bible goes on to say that King Xerxes and and Mordecai did great things. And all that happened because of a simple conversation. A simple conversation. The Esther made a great difference. And I'm here to tell you that you and you and you and you can make a difference by something as simple as a conversation. But there's a few steps, a few things that you need to do. And so here's these three small steps that can make a difference. And the first one is you need to get ready now. Get ready now. It says this in Scripture, Proverbs 21, 5. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Now, I know many of you are in band or mathletes or you play sports, and you're all the time practicing, preparing, so you either can make the team or get ready for the big game. But most of us, when it comes to our walk and our faith in Christ, we take it for granted. But that should be the most intentional thing that we do in our life. Is we should be preparing ourselves for what God wants to do in our lives. Now you say, but Vince, how do I do that when I don't even know what God makes you wants to do in my life? Here's some things that you do know. God wants to speak to you. And one of the greatest ways he speaks to you is when you read his word. You should be in your Bible daily reading his word. One of the ways that we know that God wants to do is when we come to church. So some of you might be here tonight, but you haven't been in a few weeks because you haven't made church a priority. How can you make church a priority? Another thing we can do to get prepared is by serving others, right? How can you be a student leader? How can you serve in life, kids? How can you serve on the host team? How can you serve in the different opportunities that exist in your location? How can you be prepared by simply doing those things daily, like spending time in God's Word? For Queen Esther, what did she do? Well, I imagine that she probably had some speaking lessons, probably had to study up in case the king asked some questions. She was preparing. She was getting ready for what was to come. And even though she did not know that one day a conversation would save her people, she was still getting ready. My question to you is, are you willing to get ready now for what's to come? So if the first thing is get ready now, the second thing is stay in position, right? Stay in position. Scripture tells us this. It says, if you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just a time as this. See, that's what Mordecai was telling Queen Esther. What if all the preparation that happened for you to become queen, even the difficult times of your parents being lost, that's tragic, that's hard, but me adopting you, you coming to my family, you living in this area, you hearing about the opportunity to be queen, and all of a sudden now you are queen, and now here is the opportunity before you to do something about it. 
What about you? What about the opportunities before you? See, Esther's life wasn't easy. Some of you have lost your parents and you can relate to the fact of how difficult a life that is. She was also adopted. So it's nice to have someone loving and wanting to care for you and invite you into your life, but it can be difficult when you're not around your biological parents. I imagine if your adopted parent or your parent is in the military, they might be going often. And that can't be easy. Or maybe for you, you've been picked on and things aren't the easiest. But here's the deal. Esther was still going through all the things, but still preparing herself. And she was in position because she was intentional about the things in life. Are you in position for God to use you? Or are you busy hiding and taking cover and running because life is difficult? I get it. Sometimes we just want to make the thing stop. But as we heard Pastor Sam Roberts sharing a message a little while back, he said, even when things are difficult, Jesus is still in the boat with you. So I need you to know this, is that, hey, when we think, hey, we're all alone and we don't know what to do, Jesus is still there with you. So how can we stay in position? Not because we're doing it on our own power, but because we literally know that Jesus is walking with us. He is beside us. So when we're struggling with things and we feel like we're getting picked on or that person that we thought we were going to spend the rest of our life with breaks up with us, we know that Jesus is still with us. When we hear that our parents are going to get a divorce and we go, oh my goodness, Lord, what do I do? We go, Jesus is still with us. When our best friend who's been lying and sneaking behind our back and telling all means things about it, we hear about that. We go, you know what? Jesus is still with me. So, the first thing we do is no matter our situation, we get ready. The second thing is, is we stay in position. And the third thing we do is we choose simple obedience. Let's look what scripture tells us here. It says, Queen Esther replied, if I have found favor with the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my request, I ask that my life and the lives of my people be spared. For my people have been sold to those who would kill, slaughter, and annihilate us. If we had merely been sold as slaves, I could remain quiet for what would be too trivial a matter to warrant disturbing the king. Because Esther went to King Xerxes, because she took a chance, because she could have been like that other king, other queen out there on the streets, but she took a chance and she said, hey, could you spare my people? And King Xerxes said, yes. Sometimes simple obedience is as simple as a conversation. Many of you, your lives are different because someone had simple obedience because they went up to you and God said this. He said, hey, go invite that person to church. And they walked up to you and they said, hey, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I know God's changed my life. I would love if you would join me at church. Some of you have been in positions where, hey, you didn't know what you were going to eat for dinner that night, and God prompted on someone's heart and said, hey, go take family food to that family. And that person was obedient and took food to that family. In just a few weeks, we have an amazing opportunity to make a huge difference in the world with Switch Fights Human Trafficking. We're just a little simple obedience where you say, hey, I'm going to invite as many friends as possible to be a part of this. Hey, I'm going to choose to be generous, to go above my normal tithe and give to making human trafficking non-existent in this world. Hey, I'm going to take the opportunity and be a part of something bigger than myself. Because that's what Esther did. And she said, I'm going to get ready now. I'm going to stay in position. And I'm going to choose simple obedience. I want to leave you with this in Colossians 3, 16 through 17. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives 
Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for an opportunity, Father, to be difference makers. But Father, we know in order to do that, God, that there's work that we need to do in our own lives, Father. So I pray that you help us to get ready, God. I pray you help us to stay in position, God, and I pray that you help us to choose simple obedience, God. Because as your children, God, we want to change the world, God, for you. God, because we know the same power that raised Christ from the dead, from the grave, lives inside of us, God. And you want to use that in a mighty and powerful way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said. If you enjoyed this week's content, we've got even more content for you. Click right here and find more ways that you can make a difference.